In the journey of faith, it's natural to encounter moments of doubt, confusion, or even misinterpretation. This is particularly true in Nichiren Buddhism, a profound and transformative practice that demands rigorous adherence to its principles. Many practitioners find themselves unknowingly deviating from the correct path, which can hinder their spiritual growth and the realization of true happiness. Nichiren Daishonin, the 13th century Japanese monk who founded this school of Buddhism, emphasized the importance of correct practice. He wrote, the journey from Kamakura to Kyoto takes 12 days on foot. If a traveler who has already covered 11 days and has but one day remaining turns back, he will have to retrace the entire 12 days journey. This passage from The Teaching for the Latter Day underscores the significance of staying true to the path, even when you're close to your destination. In Nichiren Buddhism, straying from the correct practice can similarly set you back, requiring you to start anew. So, how can you tell if you're not practicing Nichiren Buddhism correctly? Here are 15 signs that suggest you might need to realign your path. Number 1. Chanting Nam Myoho Renge Kyo without understanding its meaning. Many newcomers to Nichiren Buddhism begin chanting the Dai Moku, Nam Myoho Renge Kyo, without fully grasping its profound meaning. While there's merit in chanting itself, True transformation comes from understanding. Nam Myoho Renge Kyo represents the title of the Lotus Sutra, which Nichiren Daishonin identified as the ultimate teaching of Shakyamuni Buddha. It embodies the law of cause and effect, the potential for Buddhahood in all life, and the interconnectedness of all phenomena. Number 2. Treating the Gohanzen as a wishing tree. The Gohanzen, the mandala inscribed by Nichiren Daishonin, is not a magical charm for granting wishes. It's a mirror reflecting your innate Buddha nature. As Nichiren states in Reply to Kyo, never seek this Gohanzen outside yourself. The Gohanzen exists only within the mortal flesh of us ordinary people who embrace the Lotus Sutra. If you're treating the Gohanzen like a genie in a lamp, you're missing its true purpose. Number 3. Neglecting study of Nichiren's writings. Chanting alone isn't enough. Nichiren Daishonin left a treasury of writings, Gosho, that guide our practice. In The True Aspect of All Phenomena, he states, exert yourself in the two ways of practice and study. Without practice and study, there can be no Buddhism. Failing to study these writings means you're missing crucial insights into correct practice. Number 4. Focusing solely on personal benefits. While it's natural to pray for personal benefits, Nichiren Buddhism is about more than self-improvement. It's about realizing the Buddha nature in yourself and others, working for Kosen Rufu, world peace through individual happiness. Nichiren writes in, on establishing the correct teaching, if you care anything about your personal security, you should first of all pray for order and tranquility throughout the four quarters of the land. Your practice should extend beyond personal gain. Number 5. Engaging in slandering other teachings. Nichiren was critical of other Buddhist schools he believed misinterpreted the Lotus Sutra. However, this doesn't mean we should slander other faiths. In The Opening of the Eyes, he clarifies, all scriptures lead to the one vehicle. Therefore, they are not to be discarded. Our focus should be on our own practice, not denigrating others. Number 6. Lacking in compassion and empathy. Buddha nature exists in all beings. If you're not cultivating compassion and empathy, you're not fully embracing Nichiren's teachings. He writes in The Heritage of the Ultimate Law of Life, even a heartless villain loves his wife and children. If we cultivate goodness, our compassion extends to all people. Your practice should foster greater understanding and kindness. Number 7. Becoming arrogant about your practice. Some practitioners, especially those who've seen benefits, become prideful. This arrogance is a sign of incorrect practice. Nichiren warns in Letter to Nik, arrogance is the foremost impediment to the practice of Buddhism. Remember, the goal is to reveal your Buddha nature, not to inflate your ego. Number 8. Neglecting daily practice. 
consistency is key in Nichiren Buddhism. The power of the practice accumulates over time. If you're chanting only when you need something or feel like it, you're not practicing correctly. As Nichiren says in King Rinda, to chant Nam Myoho Renge Kyo without ever slackening is the basis for attaining Buddhahood. Make chanting a daily habit. Number 9. Failing to apply Buddhist principles in daily life. Chanting and studying are essential, but so is applying Buddhist principles in everyday situations. If you're not striving to embody concepts like the oneness of life and its environment or the ten factors in all phenomena, you're missing a crucial aspect of practice. Nichiren stated in The Object of Devotion, the Buddha dwells in our five-foot body. Your daily life is the ultimate stage for Buddhist practice. Number 10. Not participating in Nichiren Buddhism activities. While personal practice is fundamental, Nichiren Buddhism isn't a solitary path. Active participation in Nichiren Buddhism, the lay organization that propagates Nichiren's teachings, is vital. Group activities like discussion meetings and study sessions deepen your understanding and strengthen your faith. Isolating yourself goes against the spirit of Kosen Rufu. Number 11. Ignoring the principle of oneness of mentor and disciple. The relationship between mentor and disciple is pivotal in Nichiren Buddhism. This doesn't mean blind obedience but rather learning from those who've walked the path before us. Nichiren exemplified this in his relationship with his disciples. If you're not seeking guidance from senior members or studying the examples of great leaders like Sunasaburo Makaguchi, Josei Toda, and Daisaku Ikeda, you're missing a key support in your practice. Number 12. Chanting without determination or conviction. When you chant Nam Myoho Renge Kyo, it should be with firm determination and unwavering conviction. Nichiren asserts in Reply to Kyo O, when you chant Nam Myoho Renge Kyo, you must summon up deep faith that Myoho Renge Kyo is your life itself. Half hearted chanting or doubting the power of the mystic law indicates a fundamental misunderstanding. Number 13. Not challenging your fundamental darkness. We all have deep rooted delusions and negative tendencies, what Nichiren Buddhism calls fundamental darkness. If you're not actively working to recognize and challenge these aspects of yourself, you're not fully engaging with the practice. As Nichiren writes in Opening the Eyes of Wooden and Painted Images, when deluded, one is called an ordinary person, but when enlightened, one is called a Buddha. Your practice should illuminate your blind spots. Number 14. Using Buddhism as an escape from reality. Some people turn to Buddhism when life gets tough, hoping it will magically solve their problems. While Nichiren Buddhism provides tools for overcoming challenges, it's not about escaping reality. Instead, it's about facing difficulties head-on with courage derived from your Buddha nature. Nichiren encourages in the opening of the eyes, suffer what there is to suffer, enjoy what there is to enjoy. Regard both suffering and joy as facts of life. Don't use your practice as a way to avoid life's realities. Number 15. Not sharing Buddhism with others. Finally, a critical sign that you're not practicing correctly is keeping Nichiren Buddhism to yourself. Sharing this practice is not just an option, it's an integral part of the path. Nichiren declares in The True Aspect of All Phenomena, if you propagate it, devils will arise without fail. If they did not, there would be no way of knowing that this is the correct teaching. Introducing others to Nam Myoho Renge Kyo is a responsibility and a testament to your faith. Practicing Nichiren Buddhism correctly requires more than just chanting it demands understanding, application, humility, consistency, compassion, and proactive sharing. As Daisaku Ikeda explains, Buddhism is a teaching of constant growth. It's about challenging your weaknesses and growing stronger and wiser with each new day. If you've recognized any of these signs in your practice, don't be discouraged. Every realization is an opportunity for growth. Just as Nichiren teaches in The Drum at the Gate of Thunder, although I and my disciples may encounter various difficulties, if we do not harbor doubts in our hearts, we will as a matter of course attain Buddhahood. 
your awareness of these misalignments is itself a step toward correct practice. Remember, the essence of Nichiren Buddhism is revealing your inherent Buddha nature a state of absolute happiness, wisdom, and compassion. By rectifying these errors, you realign yourself with this profound truth, paving the way for a more fulfilling practice and a life of greater meaning, purpose, and joy. Your journey in faith is ongoing, and every day offers a new chance to practice correctly, grow spiritually, and contribute to a more harmonious world.